Greetings and welcome to the channel. This is Michaela from Team Retrogue, where we like retro games and the devices that bring them to us. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to cover an older handheld because I recently got my hands on a Nintendo DSi XL and I forgot how sleek and innovative these handhelds were at the time. And in a lot of my videos, I cover Nintendo DS emulation on single screen devices. But if you really want true DS gameplay, a DSi XL really is the way to go because you're going to get a native pixel perfect resolution for Nintendo DS because that's what this system was meant to play. So if you have one of these kicking around, this is going to be a tutorial video on how to modify it to play DS-ROMs off an SD card. And Nintendo DSi is actually capable of much more than that. We can actually get this to emulate some older systems like Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. So this video is designed to get you from zero to hero and maximize the potential of your Nintendo DSi system. So with that, let's dive in and let's get to work. All right, because this is a tutorial video, we're going to take things down a little bit and we're going to put on some more chill music from Now the Nightmare. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go over what you are going to need in order to do this mod. First thing you're going to need is a Nintendo DSi or a DSi XL. Unfortunately, this type of modification will not work on a DS Lite or an original model DS. You also need an SD card, a USB, SD card reader, and some type of computer in order to transfer files. Now this could be Windows, Mac, or Linux. I am using a Windows video in this tutorial. So you might be asking yourself, why buy a Nintendo DSi XL over a different handheld? Well, there's a couple of different reasons that I actually prefer this over something like a Nintendo 3DS or a handheld like the Odin or the Ioneal Pocket Air. And the first reason is that DSi XLs have dual IPS screens, which means you're going to get some nice bright color saturation and the screen is not going to blur out or become hazy when you're looking at it diagonally. In addition, Nintendo 3DS models are inconsistent. You may get a model with one IPS screen, you may get a model with two IPS screens, you may get a model with dual TN screens, and you never know what you're going to get from one model to the next. At least with the DSi XL, it's consistent. They all have the same dual IPS screens. These are also a lot more reasonable to purchase aftermarket than a 3DS. And in my opinion, even though the screens are bigger than the original model DS, you still get a pixel perfect resolution. Things don't seem stretched out or blown up. They still seem nice and crisp. And barring using an emulation device and upscaling, this is probably going to be the best way to play Nintendo DS games. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. And we're going to use this website, dsi.cfw.guide. This is the guide that we're going to follow step by step in order to go from zero to hero and get our DSi nice and modded without bricking it. And I'll leave a link to this guide in the video description. So to start off, we need to set up our SD card and we need to use GUI format in order to make sure that we have set this to FAT32. I'll leave a link in the description to that program as well, but it's as simple as selecting the proper SD card and then using this program to format it to FAT32. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and follow these links in the guide in order to download the necessary programs and put them on the SD card. So we're going to download Twilight Menu++ as well as Dump Tool, and we're going to move these into the root of our micro SD card. 
So you're going to need to use an unarchiver program like 7-Zip in order to extract the files. And then when you're done, this is what your file structure should look like. Once everything is extracted, you can delete the 7z folder because we no longer need it. Now this website lists a couple of different exploits, but the one that we're actually going to use is the top one here called Memory Pit. And the reason that we're going with this one is because some DSi consoles will have the DSi browser application installed and some won't. And it will completely depend on who the previous user of that DSi was. And so the unit that I got did not have the DSi browser application installed, so I can't actually use style hacks. And so I'm going to assume that you're in the same boat that I am and Memory Pit is really the only option available to you. So we need to start by going into our DS and we need to check the camera app. We need to see what we have in the album section. Specifically, we're looking for whether the album has a Facebook icon or not. And if you're booting up the camera icon for the first time, it's going to make you go through this ridiculously long tutorial and there's unfortunately really no way around it. You just have to go through it and follow the directions and wait until you can get to the album screen. On the bright side, I am really proud of the kaleidoscope picture that I made of my camera and key light and for some reason I actually thought that this was really cool and I just wanted to share it. But finally, after all of that, we can finally get into the album and we can see that we do indeed have a Facebook icon. And so that's going to determine exactly what file we need to download. And so let's go back to the guide and let's go ahead and download the appropriate pit.bin for our specific DS. Now, if you follow the tutorial and took a picture to your SD card, you're going to go ahead and go into that picture album by going into private and then following the folders until you get through the one with just numbers. And once you go through the folder structure, you're going to realize that there is a pit.bin already there. So you're just going to rename that to tip.bin and then you're going to put the new pit.bin in the same folder. Do not delete the renamed tip.bin. We're going to need that later. So let's go ahead, eject the SD card and put it in our DS and boot that up. And we're just going to go right into our camera application. And from there, we're going to click SD card on the top right. And then we're going to go into the album. And if you've done your folder structure properly, the second you go into that album, everything is going to flash purple and you're going to boot into this menu here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to leave the GUI, the game, the DSI titles all at system. You can set them to your preferred language if you choose. I think the only reason you would need to change any of this would be if you had a DS that you imported from Japan or from another country. So you're going to notice by running this exploit, it booted us into Twilight Menu++. And you can tell because you're going to see this specific splash screen. And things are gonna look a little bit different here. You're going to notice that now you can access your SD card's file structure, which is good because now we can run homebrew apps. And we're going to run one of these homebrew apps now called Dump Tool, which we put on our SD card earlier. And so using the touch screen, go ahead and navigate to the folder where you put that Dump Tool app. I put mine in the NDS folder. And then from there, all you have to do is press A to begin your NAND dump. This is going to create a backup just in case things go wrong and you end up with a brick. And this is going to take about five to 10 minutes or so. So it might be a good time to walk away, use the bathroom, grab a coffee or your beverage of choice, say hello to your loved ones, and then come on back in, close the door and let's continue this mod. So when everything's all done, we're going to plug in our SD card and we're going to take the folder as well as the dump tool app itself 
and we're going to copy these to a form of backup storage. You can keep them on the SD card if you want, but I would recommend you also put them somewhere else for safekeeping. And the next step in this mod would be to run Unlauncher. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to make a folder called Mods, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the Unlauncher app from this guide. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and use 7-zip again, and we're going to extract the NDS file right into this mods folder. And then we could delete the zip file when we're done. Once everything's extracted, we no longer need it. Now, because Unlauncher hasn't been installed yet, we're still on a soft mod, so we have to go back into the camera app again and go into the album to relaunch the exploit and get back into Twilight menu. And then we're going to navigate to the mods folder that we created and we're going to launch this unlaunch DSI installer. And you're going to see some options here, but really the only one we are concerned with is install now. So go ahead and scroll down and click the A button and it's going to run through the process of installing unlauncher to your DSI's NAND. The process doesn't take that long at all, and once the installation is complete, we can go ahead and reboot our DSi. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can make sure that uninstaller was put in properly. And sure enough, when we go ahead and boot up the DS, we're no longer in the stock DSi menu. We are now in the unlauncher menu. So this means that the exploit has been installed and we can now go ahead and start setting up our DSi to start running ROMs. So let's go into unlauncher options. And from there, we're going to tweak a couple of things that affect what we can boot into on the DSi. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change no button to Twilight Menu++. Plus Plus. So this is automatically going to boot us into our ROM library once we click the power button. We don't have to do anything else. The A button, if we hold it, it'll take us into Unlauncher. The B button will take us into our slot one cart and the X button will take us to the regular default DSi menu. So once you've set those preferences, go ahead and click save and exit, and then go ahead and hold the power button to turn off the unit. And then let's turn it back on just so we can make absolutely sure that we're booting into Twilight Menu. And as you could see here, we are good to go. Everything is working. So we can now shut our unit off. We could plug the SD card into our computer, and we could clean up and put ROMs on our SD card so that way we could start using them on this device. And the cleanup process is fairly simple. We need to go back into the private DS app and the numbers folder, and we need to delete the pit.bin that housed our exploit, and then we need to change the tip.bin from earlier back to pit.bin. This will give us full use of our DSi camera once again. We can also delete the unlaunch.nds file because we already have unlaunch installed in our NAND and so we no longer need this app. Placing our SD card back into the DS and powering it up, if we go ahead and press the select button, we're actually going to be greeted by a classic DS menu to which we can click the icon in the bottom center to access our Twilight Menu++ plus plus settings. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I do advise that you peruse these settings at your leisure and pick the ones that best fit your use case. And so obviously the best use for a modded DSi Excel is going to be to play Nintendo DS ROMs. And in that respect, they play natively and they play on the DS exactly as they're supposed to. And so you're going to get the touchscreen support, you're going to get both screens, and you're going to get a pixel perfect aspect ratio. But there are a couple of other emulators that this device can now utilize. One of them being for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And out of all the emulators, this seems to be the most feature rich. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot here. 
Now you'll notice the pixels look really weird at first. So I actually strongly recommend you go into the display settings and set the scaling to full. And in doing so, you're not going to really have any stretching out of the image and the pixels are not going to look cramped. In fact, for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, this is actually a fairly pleasant experience. But then once we get into Game Boy Advance, you're going to find that the GBA Runner emulator is very feature unfriendly, which means that there are pretty much no options other than running the game. You can't change the aspect ratio and you can't adjust any other settings. You could only play it with what they give you. And so you're going to have a little bit of letterboxing here, but it's not a bad experience. It's just not as good as the Game Boy and Game Boy Color experience. And Twilight Menu Plus Plus has some other emulators in there, but I would not recommend them because they're again, very feature unfriendly and they don't perform as well as the Game Boy ones. So I would stick to Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo DS, and maybe Game Boy Advance if you can tolerate it. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go out and buy a pre-owned Nintendo DS just to run this mod, but if you have one kicking around the house or you find a really good deal on one, this is a very good way to take that existing unit you already have and expand its functionality. And in that sense, I hope this video was helpful to you. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have nostalgia for a DS system? And do you prefer running DS games on native hardware as opposed to running them on a different retro handheld like the Odin or the Retroid Pocket? And feel free to continue the conversation on the retro handhelds and the Steam Machine Discord where you can find me hanging out in between videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if this was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.